Okay, so for this part of the web webinar, I'm going to show you a demo of Cyber Sentinel. Uh, we'll demonstrate three uh, use cases, the first being our DNS tunneling detector, and the second uh, part of the demo will be a demonstration of the predictive blacklisting use case and the profiling use case. You'll remember that predictive blacklisting is our supervised learning uh, use case. And there are two uh, profiling use cases, host and domain, which are unsupervised machine learning use cases. And we'll demonstrate Cyber Sentinel's ability to detect uh, an Angular exploit kit attack, which is an advanced persistent threat. So first, let's uh, just do a quick refresher on tunneling. Tunneling has been around for a while now, as I said uh, earlier. It is um, used for a variety of purposes, some fairly benign. Uh, some somewhat malicious and some outright, uh, uh, you know, uh, very dangerous uh, for IT uh, networks and corporations. Um, this tunneling can be used by vendors to provide feedback on their application or, or some level of control. It can be used uh, by people that want to gain access to the Internet at a hotel or remote location by avoiding the captive HTTP portal. Um, and then it's more and more being used by uh, cyber criminals to gain complete access to a system. Uh, you know from the past that uh, cyber criminals and uh, nefarious users you know, have spent a lot of time trying to gain access to systems. We've read a lot about this in the news or maybe even worse experienced it. And they've used different techniques to get access to the system. Once they're in the system, they can set a back door to get in again. Uh, they can steal your information. They can do destructive damage. They can plant a Trojan horse. There's a lot of uh, things that can be done on your network if they gain access to the system. Uh, with a DNS tunnel, uh, if your system is infected through a browser or by some means a USB key or something to that effect, once the DNS tunnel is established, passwords aren't needed. Uh, you're in the system. You can change passwords, create new accounts, do anything you want. You own the system uh, for all intents and purposes uh, at that point. So uh, DNS tunnel detection is very important. Cyber Sentinel can do it in real time. And as a security administrator, uh, or, or owner of a, a enterprise, you definitely want to know if there are tunnels being established in your network and for what purpose, okay? So uh, what we'll do is we'll start up the tunneling use case on our Cyber Sentinel appliance. So this is a look at the uh, Cyber Sentinel appliance desktop. Uh, we make the uh, asset, the IBM Research asset, very consumable and, and uh, easy to use for our customers. There's a start and stop button to to start the system and the background processes of InfoSphere streams and so forth. And then for each use case, we have a stop and start button. So I'll start up our DNS tunneling use case. And uh, while the system is uh, activating, I'll go over to a small uh, virtual machine that I have here running Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux 7. And uh, here I have installed a tunneling package, okay? So I've got three things that I've uh, started up here. Um, I've reached out into the cloud, um, and I have installed a small Ubuntu virtual machine, loaded this facility called DNS Cat, uh, which is a tunneling application. And I've started up uh, DNS Cat, and it is here listening um, you know, for uh, a client to connect. So think of this as a command and control DNS tunneling uh, machine for a uh, cyber uh, criminal. And then the infected client, I'm simulating here perhaps my desktop. Uh, perhaps I've been directed uh, through some means to a, a website that's infected. I've had a, a tunneling package installed in memory on my system. It's undetected by normal uh, security um, uh, packages I have in my system. Uh, the firewall will not help me here because all this is going to appear as a normal uh, DNS transaction. So. Um, I, I have uh, simulated a piece of malware, malware here that has reached out to the DNS uh, tunneling command and control server and established a tunnel and, exe and executed a shell uh, so that uh, full access is given to uh, the criminal in the cloud. Okay? And so once the malware, malware started, a session was established. Um, I connected, uh, simulating a hacker here, I connected to the session. And I started looking. I've got full shell control, full control of the system. I started looking around. I see that the user is BI admin, so I changed directory to the home directory. I listed all the contents of the directory. I saw this very interesting file called personal data, okay, which wasn't properly protected. So I decided that, that I would print this out using the cat command in Linux 
and here perhaps is my social security number, bank account information, passwords, and so forth. I quickly, once I have the information, I kill the tunnel connection, nothing has been detected unless Cyber Sentinel's running, and so the criminal has got away with lots of valuable information. In the background here, I've also been running Wireshark, which captures all the packets going across the network to my uh, virtual machine here and into the cloud where the command and control center was. And I can see as I filter on DNS request and response, I see uh, that a tunnel uh, was indeed established, a DNS CAT tunnel. You can see here uh, the DNS CAT is showing up um, here. And so um, I've recorded this, um, uh, you know, period of, of uh, packet uh, transmissions on my uh, from my virtual machine. So now I'm going to go back to Cyber Sentinel, and we'll see if the tunneling uh, use case has started, um, and it has. Okay, so here's our tunneling job. I'll quickly bring up the streams graph so you can see, see the streams flow graph. You'll recall from the presentation um, how streams works as a, a directed graph with a series of processing elements. So here's the tunneling use case running. Okay, so we'll um, go to the system here, and uh, here is Wireshark running on Cyber Sentinel. This is the recorded capture. I'll focus on DNS uh, packets. Indeed, here is the DNS cat uh, tunnel that we set up. So this is the right uh, PCAP file recording. Uh, so I'm going to now um, pass this to the Cyber Sentinel tunneling use case, and that will activate tunneling, and it will start processing the traffic. This could have been a live feed. Uh, and I would be doing this, uh, I could be doing this in real time and detecting the tunnel in real time. So if we look at the results, I'm just using uh, text output at this point. This could be going to QRadar, Big Insights, Excel, uh, Splunk, whatever I would use for a dashboard or a SIEM solution. Okay, and tunneling, um, uh, the, the Cyber Sentinel tunneling use case reports benign traffic infected and suspicious. So the heuristic will always report tunneling activity. If it sees tunneling activity with encrypted or encoded traffic, it will often uh, re report that as infected. It just depends on the exact um, nature of the transaction, how the heuristic is, uh, develop is written. And then in my case, it's going to report this as suspicious. It hasn't seen any encrypted traffic. I didn't set that up, but it sees a tunnel and it reports this as, uh, as suspicious. So if we look at this file, okay, we can see that uh, indeed there is some uh, results here, and if I print out my results, I can see the DNS cat tunnel was detected. Had this been a live feed, it would have been done, uh, would have been reported, if you will, uh, in real time. Okay. So that's DNS tunneling. Let's uh, change over now to uh, predictive blacklisting and profiling. Okay, so as I said, I wanted to demonstrate Cyber Sentinel's ability to detect and advance persistent threat. This article comes from the X4 Security Intelligence um, site, and it talks about uh, Angular Exploit Kit being used over the past year, really since 2013, reaching back two years, uh, to provide significant problems for the financial industry. There's been a lot of monetary loss as a result of this exploit kit, uh, serious problems for major corporations and their IT systems. And you can see uh, in 2014, Angular was one of several um, exploit kits, and uh, it, grew, it grew in prevalence. It's very advanced and difficult to detect. And as of May of 2015, this past um, spring, it was 82% uh, of attacks uh, were, were um, Angular exploit kit attacks. And so this has been used in the financial industry uh, for, by cyber criminals, uh, state-sponsored terrorists, and um, it's been used in a number of industries as well, manufacturing. We've had a customer report that they were uh, impacted by the Angular Exploit Kit. Okay? This diagram shows you how an uh, Angular Exploit uh, uh, Kit would attack your system. It's similar to other types of attacks. There, was, there are some similarities here that we see. So it could be um, a spammer sending you, uh, the victim, an email message to direct you to a site that would infect you, or it could be just you and your browser going to a reputable website that you've used in the past, and um, this website has become infected, 
and uh, it causes your browser to be redirected to a malicious website um, where you are uh, you are infected with malware through some type of vulnerability in your browser. Okay, this results typically in a DNS transaction, so that the malware can establish a tunnel or uh, in this case, exfiltrate data so it connects to a command and control system, and um, suddenly you're losing your data, perhaps immediately or over time in small uh, increments. So at all points, um, the Ang Angular exploit kit and, and, and a number of these exploit kits in general go to great lengths to avoid detection. They evade reputation filtering like the X-Force facility by switching up host names, IPs, and domain names. They dynamically generate malware for each victim using encryption techniques and so forth so that you, you, you cannot detect um, your normal virus protection packages cannot detect what's going on. And then as a cybersecurity professional after the attack has happened, you of course want to do analysis post-mortem and that becomes very difficult, difficult to use uh, anti-sandbox tricks and so on to avoid any type of post-mortem analysis so that uh, you can prevent another Angular exploit kit attack from happening. Angular exploit kit is an advanced persistent threat. Okay, so let's flip over and I'll show you a uh, website that actually has studied this and, and recorded um, Angular exploit kit attacks. MalwareTrafficAnalysis.net uh, will provide a security professional with a PCAP recording of a real Angular exploit uh, kit attack, along with a post-mortem analysis of what happened. Um, based on how they, you know, the, uh, the packet capture and some uh, research that they have done. This particular attack, okay, the, in this case, the user is directed somehow uh, to this website, Post Drowning Lens Island, okay, and then after going to that website and becoming infected, um, the uh, packet capture recording shows post infection DNS queries to these websites, which may be used for data theft and exfiltration. This is the first one that will run through our predictive blacklisting use case, which is our supervised learning use case. The second one is, slight, is a slight derivative, a bit newer, uh, more recent. In this case, you're directed to this site uh, by some means, and then the post-infection queries uh, come in the form of machine-generated domains. You can see these domain names are machine-generated. And this is a, uh, we call these DGAs. This is a popular technique to avoid law enforcement and take down uh, if you're a cyber, cyber criminal of your command and control center. Um, these change up on a daily basis or more frequently. And as long as one of these servers resolves to a real IP address via the malware, data theft can take place on your system. Note here that uh, this particular derivative of Angular exploit is a fileless infection meaning it's very difficult to detect uh, by normal means. It's, uh, your your uh, malware is planted, in the, the malware that infects your system is planted in memory, very difficult to detect without a malware, a network malware detector, uh, which is exactly what Cyber Sentinel uh, does. So let's go over and take a look at the results here. So back to our Cyber Sentinel system, okay. Uh, I, have record, I have downloaded uh, these two Angular exploit kit attacks. I passed the first through predictive blacklisting and the second through domain profiling. And here I'm going to show you the results um, of this attack um, using uh, QRadar. Okay. And you can see the predictive blacklisting use case detected this Angular exploit kit attack. It passed, uh, it uh, forwarded the results uh, to the QRadar dashboard, and I've used a um, search, uh, a quick search that uh, we, we set up as part of Cyber Sentinel for QRadar, so I can quickly visualize results of findings. Okay, and here I can see, just like you saw on the uh, the website, let's go back just real quickly and look at the website here again. All right, you saw that this first attack would result in post-infection queries to these websites. And indeed, that is exactly uh, what is getting reported via QRadar on the screen here. Okay, these are the post-infection queries. So in real time, we detected this Angular exploit kit attack. 
And for the second use case, a profiling use case, this is our unsupervised machine learning algorithm, it detected all of these machine-generated domains, or DGAs. So the post-infection queries were trying to resolve to one of these uh, machine-generated domains for data theft. Okay, so again, this was detected in real time, and you, the security administrator, would have had an opportunity to, uh, to shut this down, uh, inspect the infected system before it became a real problem. Um, or at least stop it from happening happening again, okay? Additionally, um, I uh, passed the information to the Hadoop file system in Big Insights. Uh, Big Insights is IBM's uh, Hadoop offering. It's sort of some very significant value add. Here you can see the Big Sheets technology uh, within Big Insights reporting uh, the post-infection queries of the first test that we ran, okay? Same thing that you saw in QRadar. Big Sheets uh, sits on top of the Hadoop Pig Latin um, technology and allows you to have spreadsheet-like functionality in a big data environment okay, and do all sorts of analysis. It's very useful. Additionally, uh, we reported through MaxMind the geographic information for this attack. So this Angular exploit kit, these post-infection queries were directed to servers in Brazil, Poland, Turkey, and the U.S. This is typical of a uh, cyber ring, you'll find uh, the servers distributed around the globe uh, as opposed to a normal benign uh, system like Google or Yahoo, which would be uh, perhaps localized to your country, depending on where you were, okay? And finally, I also passed this data over to uh, Big Insights, and we um, ingested the data and created a schema uh, in Big SQL. Big SQL uh, is another value add to Big Insights and enables you to do standard uh, SQL queries in a very high performance fashion against your data you know, stored in the Hadoop file system. You can query over massive amounts of data and perform analysis and so forth. And here you can see I queried the table and you, know, you can see the post-infection queries uh, to that first, uh, using that first Angular exploit kit detector. Okay. I could also here be displaying my Latin long uh, for these post-infection uh, queries and, and where they resolve to. Okay. I could be looking at my X-Force reputation feed and the risk level uh, that was detected as part of this uh, uh, detection. So uh, there was a, there were a lot of, there's a lot of rich information that's stored here in Big Insights that Cyber Sentinel passes over. Okay. And so that uh, concludes the, the demonstration. Um, please feel free to reach out to us if you'd like to uh, have, uh, have an analysis or a pilot done uh, for your site. If there's any further interest, we'd love to talk to you. Here's our contact information. Thank you, and have a great day.